Praise the Lord. Amen. Jesus hasn't come yet. We're still here. Amen. 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 So you know what that means? We've got to occupy and be about our Father's business until he does come. Amen. Amen. Did you hear that? Amen. I thought there was a trumpet sound there for me. Ooh, uh, we're that close. Amen. But let me tell you, I want to welcome everybody by way of internet. Thank you so much for viewing our ministry. We hit a couple thousand this week. Amen. So may God bless you and continue to bless you. And I hope you're one of them. And I pray that all is well with you and your family. Amen. And we want to pray for all our viewers. Matter of fact, the Lord told me to give you this scripture. Everyone that's listening that loves the Lord. Amen. That'll be in 3 John verse 2. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Amen. That's for you today. That's our prayer. That's our wish from the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Body, mind, soul, and spirit. God died for the total man. Didn't he? Yes. Amen. Yes. Also, we want to continue to pray for our president, Donald Trump, and all those that are in government. As God wills. Yes. Praise the Lord. Now, don't hit the panic button because God's still in control. But I do need you to hit the share button. Amen. And a lot of people must be doing that because, like I said, we're getting a lot of views. And we're, we're really blessed by that. We're humbled by it. And we thank God for it. If anything, this ministry is about reaching the lost. Amen. Encouraging the saints. Amen taking care of the poor, the needy, all the things that God's word says to do, we do our best to do just that. Amen? Amen. amen. If you would like to help make a difference, amen, in the world, in our communities, especially at this time of the year around Thanksgiving and Christmas, amen, when we go out, we just went out last week, we go out and we take our bus out with a handful of people and we just preach the gospel and we minister with food and clothing and all the things we just love on the people that are hurting because there's a lot of hurting people out there. But if you'd like to be a part of that and help us at this time of the year for the poor, the homeless, and they're out there. Believe me, we went out in the rain and they're out there. And people are still in need no matter what's raining, sunshine, or snowing or whatever. They're still out there. They're still homeless, still roaming the streets, waiting for somebody to come and tell them Jesus loves them. Amen. 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 And not just in word only, but in deed, the yes. Bible says. Yes. So we like to give you a, give you a chance by doing that. We have a PayPal that you can go to or an address that you can see uh, on the video there. So we pray that you'll use it. And I, I want to thank you in advance for not being selfish. Amen. But being a blessing instead. Praise God. Amen. And now for the message today. Praise God. Is there a remedy? And the uh, truth is there is a remedy. Because some people have doubts. Is God really cured? Is God really healed? Does God have a remedy for my ailment? Does God have a remedy for my problems? Absolutely. We're going to show you that in the word today. Let's turn quickly to, to Luke chapter 7 verses 22, uh, 21 to 23. And in the same hour he cured many of their infirmities listen, <clears throat> and plagues. We're all facing a plague called the coronavirus. But let me tell you, nothing new about plagues. Plagues been from way back when, right? Generation after generation. Amen. And Jesus was going around healing infirmities, sicknesses, diseases, and plagues. And of evil spirits, those that are possessed with the devil. And there's still people possessed with the devil. Don't kid yourself. And his job was to go around, amen, and heal them, deliver them, and set them free. And unto many that were blind, he gave sight. Then Jesus answered and said unto them, Go your way and tell John. We're talking about John the Baptist because he was in prison at this time and had a little doubt. Mm, you know, he was in prison and he was discouraged. And he started to question a little bit. Jesus didn't rebuke him for that. Matter of fact, he told his disciples... John's disciples, to go back, because they came to him and says, are you the Messiah, or should we look for another one? And then listen, a lot of people get discouraged these days. A lot of people sometimes question in the midst of troubles and tribulations when they're being persecuted. John just wanted to make sure. And he said, you go your way, tell John what things you have seen and heard. 
how the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and to the poor the gospel is preached. Hallelujah. He covered the most of it all, didn't he? Yes. And blessed is he, listen, mm -hmm. blessed is he, soever that shall not be offended in me. Amen. He was saying, don't be offended in me, but trust me, believe me, yes. put your hopes in me. But if you're offended, it's going to be to your hurt, to your disadvantage. And as he, he told his, John's disciples to go back and tell him this so he wouldn't be offended. And he said, go back, this is another one, to encourage him, to let him know that by these signs, amen, by these miracles, you know that I'm the Messiah. You know I'm the Christ. You know I'm the Son of God. So take faith in that. Take hope in that. Amen? Amen. So then we realize that there's always been plagues, even we see there in Jesus' times. Amen? As we face the coronavirus as a plague. Some plagues are natural, some come from supernatural. Like over in Egypt, because of their sin and their disobedience, supernatural plagues took place. Then there's the natural plagues. But whatever it was, Jesus has the cure. When we come to Christ, then we get cured of our sick sin disease. Yes. Amen. Come on. Amen. 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 Nothing worse than a plague than sin. sin. Amen. Amen. And the Lord healed us when we got saved. There is a cure. There is a remedy. Hallelujah. When we repent. Mm, we have to repent. We're going to see what that exactly details and what it really means to repent. Because a lot of people don't realize what it means. A lot of them take it for granted. So, oh, I'm sorry, Lord. And they move on. No, we're going to talk about it a little bit. But repentance also brings forgiveness. Amen? When we, when we repent, when we're sorry for our sins, it brings forgiveness. Ooh, the weight that's lifted, huh? Amen. How many has experienced that? Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Repentance brings peace of mind. Freedom from guilt and shame. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Yes. It delivers us from bondage that's had us in its grips up until the time we repented. We were slaves to sin, slaves to Satan. Because the Bible says either God's your father or the devil's your father. That's, right. that's it. They're the only two choices we have. That's right. We all serve the devil whether we knew it or not, wanted to or not, by our sins. But then when we repented and came to Christ, our sins were forgiven, and now we serve the God of heaven. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Also, when we repent, it brings peace and joy. Yes. Unspeakable and full of glory. Peace that passes all understanding. Because sin is a hard taskmaster. Mm -hmm. It weighs the heart down. It weighs the mind down. It weighs the soul down. Yes. But when you repent, it's all lifted. Glory be to God. God. How many times can we repent? Just once? Mm -hmm. We repent all often. <laughs> Often, because we sin often. Yeah, yes. Maybe not on purpose. Hmm? Maybe not even knowing it. But we sin often. And either in thought, in deed, in tongue. One way, that's why we need to walk in repentance. Amen? Amen. So that we stay cleansed and clean. Amen. Glory be to God. And it brings freedom of spirit. Praise the Lord. Because you know the Bible talks about the heaviness of the spirit. Spirit can grieve. Hmm? Like when we lose a loved one or something tragic happens, our spirit grieves and sin makes our spirit grieve. But Jesus, when we repent, gives us freedom of spirit. And there's no greater feeling, amen, after salvation than to be forgiven. Yes, How many is forgiven? Anybody forgiven this place? Amen. Oh, Thank yeah. you. Give them some praise for forgiving. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. You realize what he says in Isaiah chapter 61 verse 3 it tells us to give unto them beauty for their ashes. Goes right along. This is what happens when we repent as well. The oil of joy for mourning. Mm, we'll take that anytime. And the garment of praise for the spirit of what? Heaviness. Heaviness. So even as Christians we can have a heavy spirit. But when we begin to repent 
and we begin to praise the Lord, that heaviness leaves, doesn't it? We just experienced that in our service yeah. and praise and worship, didn't we? The heaviness begins to leave. You can walk in heavy, but it leaves when you begin to worship and praise God. Hallelujah. All the worries seem to melt away. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. How do we know that, you may ask? Because Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6 tells us how it's done. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen? By the spirit of God, all these things happen to us. Yes. By the spirit of God, we get saved. Yes. By the spirit of God, we get delivered. Yes. By the spirit of God, we get healed. Mm -hmm. By the spirit of God, we walk with the Lord. By the Spirit, everything comes by the Spirit yes, of God. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Not by our might or by power, but by the Spirit of the living God. Yes. It's His might. It's His power. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Glory yes. to you, yes. Come on, don't panic. Don't panic. We're going to praise, praise Him. We're going to praise Him. Hallelujah. Yes. Just be careful you don't act like Jonah did. Yes. Jonah's problems began... The day he decided to run and be disobedient from God. Hello. Any runners in here? <laughs> yeah, he ran. I know people that run from God. We all should remember what happened to Jonah. Mm, that big old fish. Mm? Huh? Some say it was a whale. Whatever it was, it was big enough to swallow him up. Mm? And boy, I'll tell you what, when, that, when he went down to the depths, the Bible said it was like being in hell. <laughs> he went down to the depths of the ocean, seaweed all around him. I don't know if there's any license plates in there or not, but anyhow, you know, <laughs> seaweed all over him and choking him and gagging him and slimy, all that. You know, can you imagine that? Yeah, I'd repent too, wouldn't you? Amen. Get me out of here, Lord. Get me out of here. <laughs> Woo. But when he came to his senses, he repented. And the Lord spoke to that fish. God spoke to that fish twice. Once he said, go swallow up Jonah. <laughs> We're going to teach him a big lesson. <laughs> what a wild trip that was. <laughs> huh? Yeah. Then he said, after he repented, he said, now go back to the shore and spit him out. Yeah. Spit him out. <laughs> I can imagine. He must have been ugly when he came come out of that thing. Can you imagine that? Huh? Again, <laughs> seaweed all over him and everything. Yeah. You know, I don't want to even go and get too gross, but I mean, it had to be ugly. Listen, the Bible said it, it, would, it should have took him three days to get to Nineveh. He did it in one. That was before Nikes came out or any of those high-class sneakers. I mean, that boy, he could have been barefooted. He still ran. He running for God. Now, Amen. Tell you, boy, dude, you don't want to get caught like that. You don't want to get caught like that. He found favor with God again after he repented. And he ran now, instead of running from Nineveh, he's running to Nineveh. Amen. See, when, we, when we're not right with God, we run towards sin. Mm -hmm. Tarshish, mm -hmm. the Bible called it, where he ran to. And we repent and we get right with God, we start running where God wants us to go, whether it's Nineveh or somewhere else. Amen. Amen? In other words, we be obedient. So we can find that in Jonah chapter 1, verse 3. It tells us there that Jonah rose up. To listen, to flee from the presence of the Lord. Mm, my God, I can preach an hour on that. Mm -hmm. To flee from the presence of the Lord. Who in their right mind would want to run from God? Mm -hmm. But yet people run, people backslide, mm -hmm. running back to the muck and mire, back to the mud, the Bible said, for the pig and the vomit to the dog. They run backwards instead of forward. Running from the presence of the Lord. Mm. He found a ship and he paid his fare. You got to be careful how you spend your money. Mm -hmm. He spent it here on the wrong thing, on the wrong boat, wrong trip. Mm -hmm. But the Lord, amen, but the Lord got a hold of him. Amen. 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 God will cause something to happen in your life to get your attention. Amen. Not because he's mean. But because he loves you and he wants you to be obedient because he knows when you're, when you're obedient comes the favor and blessings of God. Amen. When you're disobedient and running from God, you don't get the blessings of God. 
You don't get the favor of God. What you get is a chastisement of God like Jonah did. But again, after he repented, before that he was he was running towards Tarshish. Amen? After he got chastised big time, amen, then he started to run towards Nineveh where God, well, he, why did he run from him in the first place? He didn't want to do God's work. Nineveh was a terrible, violent city. And Jonah didn't want them to repent. He was angry at him. See, the Bible says, God says, my thoughts ain't your thoughts. I don't think like you. My ways ain't like your ways. I don't do what you do. Mm -hmm. I love them in spite of their sin. Amen. And if you'll go do what I tell you to do, if you'll be obedient, maybe they'll repent of their sins. God knew they would. Mm -hmm. From the king all the way down to the animals. Mm -hmm. We're in sackcloth, repenting. From the preacher, boy, listen, after that trip, in that belly of that whale, whatever it was, my God, he came out fired up. Had to. I mean, make that trip in one day and still have enough energy to preach like you never heard preaching before because all the Nineveh repented. A, a violent, Hallelujah. violent city. Mm -hmm. Ooh, glory be to God. See, and we too must run from sin and run to the Lord. Amen? So that we might find favor and forgiveness. Repentance brings the cure. It brings the remedy. Repentance brings the remedy. Body, mind, soul, and spirit. Amen. Amen. Listen to Jeremiah chapter 33, verses 6 and 7. Behold, I will bring it healing and a cure, and I will cure them, and I will reveal unto them the abundance of peace and truth. Verse 17. And I will cause the captivity of Judah and the captivity of Israel, or the captivity of whosoever, amen, to return, and I will build them up as at the first, amen, talking to the backsliders, whether they were the Jewish nation, or whether it's God's talking to anybody listening today that's a backslider, God saying, I will, because he is the cure, I will cure you. I am the remedy amen. for your sin, for your sickness, for your disease, for whatever ails you. He said, I will reveal the abundance of peace. How? Through truth. What is truth? The word of God. Amen. Every amen. word of every jot, every tittle is the truth of the living God. Amen. amen. And we ought to apply it to our lives. Praise the Lord. Yes, God does as we see. God does judge. Amen. God chastises, and God sometimes withholds the blessings until we repent. Amen? Amen? But when we repent, glory be to God, God does, ah, uh, thank you, Jesus, God does forgive. God does restore. He said, I'll give you back everything the canker worm or the devil ate up. Everything the devil robbed from you, I'll give you double for your trouble if you repent and serve me. Hallelujah. We see that all through the Bible. I see it in my own life. Glory be to God. The more the devil messes, the more God blesses. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. God does cure. He is the remedy. He's the one that blesses. He's the one that shows favor with God and man. Amen? Amen. He's the one that lifts all the guilt and the shame from sin when we repent. He's the one that shows himself mighty on our behalf. Why? Because he's a mighty God. That's why. He's a mighty God. Wonders to perform. Hallelujah. Did he ever perform any wonders in your life? Any miracles in your life? Any blessings in your life? Any healings in your life? Any deliverances in your life? Come on, somebody. Woo. And then he restores you back. Hallelujah. Then he restores you back to service. Yeah, you can't serve him in the belly of the whale. You can't serve him at the bar room or in the honky-tonk. Come on. But you can serve him with a pure heart and clean hands when you repent. You say, all right, Lord, where, where do you want me to go? Who do you want me to talk to? Who do I minister to next? That's what God's looking for. And besides that, we're running out of time. Yes. Yes. We're running out of time. We're in the midnight hour. It's getting late. If we're going to do it, do it now. Praise God. Amen. Today's the day of salvation. Yes. The world's not promised tomorrow. 
Come on, you might be saved and sanctified and satisfied, but what about your neighbor? Amen. Hmm? Do your part. Say, well, I'm a little timid. Yeah, then put a track in his mailbox at midnight. Amen. <laughs> hey, there's always a way. Don't, don't, no excuses. You make a way. Because God's a way maker. Yes, Amen. Amen. All you got to do is say, Lord, help me. I'm timid. God said, do it at mid midnight. <laughs> Be a secret agent Christian. What a, what a 007. Come on. Just another word. Do something for Jesus, will you? Praise God. Stop making excuses. I don't feel like it. He said, be instant in season and out of season. That means whether you feel like it or not, you do the right thing because it's the right thing to do. Amen. Hey! Amen. Jesus, glory be to God. But if one does not repent of all their sins, amen, before God, listen to Proverbs chapter 21, 29, verse 1. Tells us this. He that being often reproved or rebuked, mm -hmm. hardeneth his neck, shall suddenly be destroyed. And without remedy. Yes, yes. No cure. No remedy. Why? Because of their rebellion, their stiff neck, unwilling to repent. It can come like that. My God, I've seen that happen. I'm serious. You know, people think they're going, you know, I, I, I'll get saved one day. I'm not ready yet. I'm still doing my thing. You know? And their thing ended the next day. Life ended for them the next day. You know how many I can count on my hands and I have fingers that I've seen that? Don't play with fire and you won't get burnt. Don't play with God and you won't get hurt. Amen? Right. Amen? There is a remedy if we repent. But we see here if we don't repent and we keep our neck stiff, nah, I ain't getting saved. I ain't going to church no more. I don't love the Lord no more. I don't want to do this. I don't want nobody tell me what to do. Mm. That's an attitude. That's a stiff neck, a hardened heart. Yeah. And he says, sudden destruction. Bam! Just like that. Without a remedy, no cure. This person waited too long and did not repent. And therefore, there was no cure, no remedy. Don't let that happen to you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Woo, he stands at the door of your heart and he knocks. He said, if you open that door, him and the Father will come in and suck with you. Fellowship with you. Save your wretched soul like he did ours. Yes. Amen. Thank you. Praise God. I have seen too much of that. We don't need to we don't need to see anybody else miss the boat mm -hmm. or get swallowed up like Jonah. Amen? Amen. Amen. Repent. What does it really mean? Repentance means to turn from our sins and disobedience to God. Stop being rebellious and stiff necked like we just read and turn to God. It also means a change of mind and a change of heart. Are you following me? Hallelujah. It means to be remorseful and have regrets for your past actions and sins. Amen. Godly sorrow to turn, listen, around like Jonah did with repentance that so that we can be saved and find a remedy for our sickness, whether it be physical or whether it be emotional or whether it be spiritual or whatever, because there's a lot of different sicknesses. Amen? Amen? Some people are sick in all kinds of ways. And Jesus is the only cure, Amen. the only remedy. Amen. When you try to run to the man, try to run here, try to run there, and I, don't, I believe in doctors, they have their place, but I go to Dr. Jesus first, the great physician. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. But for those that do repent, amen, of their sins, and and of their ways and all the things that we do that's not pleasing to God. If we trust Christ, there is a cure, there is a remedy. Amen. It can be found only in the blood of Jesus yes, Christ. Yes. Yes. Ooh, he washes us clean. Yes, he does. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes. And the believer, that is he who Jesus said, I'll save you. Amen. I'll minister to you if you open your heart. Amen. I'll come in and I'll save you. I'll deliver you from all those vices that's kept you in bondage. Come on. I'll heal you whether your body's broken or your heart's broken or your mind's broken. He and he alone is a great physician. He will heal if you'll just let him. Amen. Amen. And believe him. Believe that he is who he says he is. He says he is the son of God. Amen. Amen. Oh, that works for me. I don't know about you. Yes. Amen. Amen. He is the light in the midst of darkness. 
Ooh. How many's ever been in darkness? Y'all been in darkness. Come on. Don't lie, y'all been in darkness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Got two hands up because he's been Come in on. double darkness. <laughs> Amen. If I had third hand, I'd put three of them up. We've all been in darkness. Some are just more gross than others. Yes. But darkness is still darkness. Amen? Amen. And Jesus, hallelujah, he is the light of the world. Amen. Yes. And he's also the great physician. And he's our redeemer. Hallelujah. He has redeemed us. He paid the price, in other words. He brought us back. Hallelujah. He brought us to the Father. Took us out of the grip of Satan. Ooh, who had us bound by sin. And he became our Lord and our Savior, the great shepherd. What does a shepherd do? He leads the flock. Amen. He protects the flock. He's not a hireling like the Bible says. When the wolf comes, he runs. No, Jesus will beat off the wolves and devils. Amen? Glory be to God, the great shepherd. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He became the mediator between God and mankind. He's our lawyer, in other words. Amen. The devil stands there and accuses us. The Bible said he's the accuser of the brethren, uh -huh. the saints of God. Yes. Remember what he did with Job going back and forth to heaven? He goes back and forth and he accuses us before the Lord. Amen. And what? Our great mediator, Amen. Jesus Christ, stands there and says, no, 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 no. Not today, Satan. <laughs> and he wears that t-shirt not that day say you ain't getting away with that not on my watch Jesus said I died I paid the price for that I redeemed that soul yes. Yes. thank you Lord yes. Yes. Amen. he is our great deliverer why because he's the great I am yes. Ooh, hallelujah the holy one of God yeah listen even I said the holy one of God do you know even the devils know that? Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. The devils know that he's the Holy uh -huh. People don't know it. Oh. Some people don't believe it. Some people won't receive it. And the devils know it. And tremble, the Bible yes. says. Listen, Matthew chapter 8, verse 28, verse 29. Two possessed men with devils. Two mm -hmm. in the graveyard. Not one, two. Mm -hmm. And he said they were possessed with devils. Cried out, saying to Jesus... Saying, what have we to do with thee, Jesus? Ooh, listen, listen. Thou son of God. They knew who he was. He's the one that, can you keep your secret? He's the one that threw him out of heaven. Amen. Ooh, he's the one that threw him out of heaven. Like lightning, he said. Glory be to God. What have we to do with thee, thou son of God? Listen, art thou come hither to torment us before the time? You better believe it. <laughs> you better believe it. Praise God. Go. They asked him, well, man, listen, if you're going to cast us out of these two men, can at least we possess those pigs? That's all pigs are good for. Any but then that's another story. That's going to help them out. Praise God. And you know all those pigs, thousands of them, because it says here they had legions of demons, thousands of demons. So they must have had a whole bunch of pigs. Well, I'll tell you what, they all ran over the cliff. Oh, my goodness. And drowned. But the demons didn't. They're spirits. They can't die. They can't drown. So where did they go? But not come to your house. <laughs> where did they go? They're still looking for souls to possess. And a whole bunch more. Don't let them in. Amen. Amen. When they come knocking on the door, if it ain't UPS or FedEx or one of them, we don't want we don't open the door. Amazon, we like to get Amazon stuff. You know, I've never seen anybody buy as much stuff as uh, my Christina for that baby. Look, where's that baby at? Oh, that baby. Ooh, how could you say no to that baby? Oh. Diane, you got a fan. That baby's watching you with those flags. I don't know if it's your flags or those boots. I don't know what it was, but she, she happened. I, I can't help myself. I love that little baby. How many see the baby on the internet? Isn't that something? She's yeah, sweet. Oh, my Little nominee and was on the way here to stay. Over there. Amen. All right. Amen. 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 All right. I ain't gonna charge you extra for that at all, please. Amen. Whew.
Christ is ready to set the captives free, just like he did to those two gathering maniacs. They were maniacs. They were out of their mind. That's what the devil will do for you. Drive you to suicide. Drive you to drugs. Drive you to alcohol. Drive you out of your mind. Torment your soul. Yes. And that's what they did. These characters were in the graveyard cutting themselves. That would make you do all kinds of crazy things. Mm -hmm. I wasn't that bad, but I was messed up. I needed to be delivered. I needed Jesus. Thank God. Praise Him for a minute. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for saving me. Thank you. Yes. I'm so glad to be so glad to use us. I don't know what I'd do if I couldn't be used to the Lord. I'd shrivel up and die. That's right. I need to be used to the Lord. I love him that much. He really is the light that shineth in darkness. Amen? Yes, he is. He really does bring hope to the hopeless. Yes, he help is. to the helpless. Woo. How can you not praise him? How can you not love him? Amen? Amen. Because he is, like I said, the great I am. Yes, he is. The great I am. Hallelujah. Praise God. Ooh, all things are possible. To them to believe. Do you believe that? Amen. Amen. So whatever you're believing for, keep believing. Yes. Keep believing. It's coming. Thank you, Jesus. Nahum chapter 1, verse 7. The Lord is good. Yes, he is. All the time. Amen. All the time. All the time. All the time. <laughs> you must not believe that. Come on. You must not believe that. I didn't get one Come amen. On I said, I could stop right there. The Lord is good. That's it. We're going. Amen. He's good. <laughs> but it goes on. A stronghold. We can stop there and go home. But it goes on. Thank God. In the day of trouble. You facing any troubles? Hmm? We all have troubles. If not today, tomorrow. You had him yesterday. <laughs> Come on. We live in a troubled world. Troubled times. Life is filled with troubles. But he says here, he's a stronghold. What's that mean? You run to him. Amen. He protects you. He gets you through those troubles. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. He says he's a stronghold in the day of trouble. He knoweth, this is, he knoweth them that trust him. Yep. You got to trust him in the day of trouble. Mm -hmm. You don't trust him, you ain't getting out of them troubles too good. Mm -hmm. Too easy. But if you trust him, he said he knows you. Does he know that you trust him? Yes. To get you out of what he got you out of last week, last month, last year? Then that means he'll get you out of your trouble today. Yes. And tomorrow and the next day if he should tarry. Come on. Who I like this here? Amen. All right. Psalms chapter 31 verse 7. David said, I will be glad and rejoice Ooh, in thy mercy. How to do that? In his Amen. mercy. He's a merciful God. Praise God. Amen. When you think about that, we all deserve to die and go to hell. When you think about that mercy, that if we repent of whatever we need to repent of, that he showers us with mercy. Praise God. Mm. David knew that. He was there. He's been there and done that. <laughs> That's why he's talking from experience. Mm. Whew. I will be glad and rejoice in thy mercy, for thou hast considered my troubles. Yes. Did you hear that? Yes. Amen. God considers thy troubles. Yes. You're on God's mind. Amen. The trouble you're facing is on God's mind. He considers it as if it was his own. Yes. And he goes on to say, Thou hast known my soul in adversity. In hard times, troubled times. You've known my soul. You've known my anguish. You've known my pain. You've known my hurt. You know what I'm going through. You know the troubles I'm facing, whether it's physical, mental, emotional, financial, whatever it is. God, you know. But you also know whether I trust you or not to get me through it. Somebody ought to praise the Lord. Get me through it. You will. You have. You will. You do it again. Yes, he will. Adversities. What's that mean? One who opposes or hinders another. Who does that? But the devil. It's like Satan 
says he's our adversary, mm -hmm. our enemy. First Peter 5 8 tells us that. But also, in 1 John chapter 2, verse 1 tells us that we have, as believers, we have an advocate with the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ the righteous. Hey! Yeah. Hey! Glory be to God! We don't worry about the devil. We worry about Jesus. Amen. Who's our, again our lawyer. That's all it means. He's our lawyer. He stands between us and God, making intercession for us who believe. Amen. Amen. Oh, thank Amen. you, Jesus. Glory be to God. Somebody needs to hear this. God told me to say that when I was putting this together. He said, You make sure you tell them that are in the church and watching by internet. This is for you if you'll receive it. Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 17. How many want to hear it? Amen. All right, come back next week. Oh, oh you want to hear it now, right? Amen. I don't blame you. Amen. And I've got to give it to you. I will restore health unto them. I will heal thee of thy wounds, saith the Lord. Why? Because they, listen, they have, they call thee an outcast, saying, this is Zion. Now, God said, put your name there. Put your name where it says Zion. They've called you an outcast. Somebody needs to hear it. Whom no man seeketh after. Mm, rejected. Feel unloved. Been put down talked about, stabbed in the back, call it what you will, family members, friends, hopefully no church member would stoop that low. But he said, I will restore you to health, not just physically, but emotionally. Because when you're an outcast and nobody seeks after you to love you, you can have some very emotional problems going on. He said, I will restore thee to health. I will heal thy wounds. Again, not just physical, although he will do that too. But those wounds that leave scars from the tongue, from a wicked heart, from a cruel heart. He said, I will heal your wounds because they have called you an outcast. God's watching out for you. He knows who's calling you an outcast. He knows who's putting you down. He knows who's jealous of you, and that's a lot of the reason why they do it. They figure, let's put, blow his candle out to make ours look brighter. Mm. Put a wet blanket on their mm. love for Jesus. Mm. And he says, because they called you an outcast, saying, this is you, your name, whom no man seeketh after. But God... Hallelujah. God says, I'm seeking after you. I want to love you. Amen. Others may see you as an outcast, but God sees you as his. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. The devil will try and convince you that you are captive by him. But Jesus said, I've set the captive free. Hallelujah. The devil will try and tell you that you don't belong to God. And he'll try to convince you of that, but God says, you belong to me. I died for you. Yes. Amen. You. Amen. The devil wants you to believe that there is no cure, no remedy for you, but God says, mm, I am the cure. I am the remedy for sin, sickness, mind, body, soul, spirit. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God wants you whole. He died so you behold. What did we say earlier? I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper, being healthy even as your soul. That's the total man. Amen. He wants you to be whole. God wants you to be happy. Amen. God ain't into depression. There ain't a depressed thing about God, a depressed thing about heaven, or a depressed thing about a Christian. Amen. Amen. We may get depressed from time to time, but we don't live there. We don't camp there. We don't stay there. Amen. Amen. Why? Because of Jesus. Hallelujah. He wants us to be happy. He wants us to be strong. He wants us to be healed. Hallelujah. No one can cure 
and have a remedy like Christ. Amen? Amen? No one provides the remedy like Jesus. No one can heal a broken body like Jesus, a broken mind, a broken home, or a broken life, or a broken dream like Jesus. Amen? Amen. You're not an outcast. You belong to God. Don't you ever let the devil tell you or anybody else that you're an outcast, you're not loved, you're not welcome. Christ died for you. Thank you, Jesus. For God so loved the world, he loved you, that he died on a cruel cross, that you can be his. The devil's just jealous of you, that you don't belong to him no more. Amen. Amen. God is seeking for you, to you to love you, to heal you, to help you, to bless you. Amen. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15 and 16. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with our feelings. You ever hear a preacher say, we ain't supposed to go by feelings. Well, you tell that to Jesus. Amen. He feels for us. Right. Amen. Right there. He feels for us. Woo. He can be touched, amen, with the feelings of our, listen, infirmities. But was in all points tempted, just like us, yet without sin. Verse 16, let us therefore come boldly onto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in times of need. You can't do that with unconfessed sin in your life. That's why it's so important to repent so that the remedy can take hold, amen, and heal us so that we can obtain grace and find uh, grace and mercy to help us in times of need. Why? Because Jesus paid the price for our sins. The throne of judgment before we know Jesus has now become the throne of grace. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yes. Thank you, Lord. We don't have to stand before the throne of judgment and hear him say, Depart from me, you curse it. You worker of evil, I never knew you. Calls for the angels, the Bible says, it throws them into hell. Mm -hmm. But when we repent, who will we stand there? Not with pride, but with a grateful heart. Yes, say, Lord, I'm not worthy, but you're worthy and you live in me. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. By your righteousness. Yes. By your grace, I stand before your throne. Yes, I Not the throne of judgment. Mm -hmm. but the throne Praise of God. grace and mercy. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Glory yes. be to God. Yes. That excites my soul. You, Woo. And all true believers can now come boldly to that throne and receive the help they need yes. for their problems, their plagues, whatever it is, the sin. Because God is greater that all those things combined. Amen. In closing, he has the cure because he is the cure. And his cure comes through the blood of Jesus. Quickly, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort. Does he comfort us or what? Yes. Next verse, verse 4. Who comforteth us, in all our tribulation. Think about that. Ooh. We don't need comfort when everything's going good. But my Lord, we need it when we're facing tribulation. Mm, hard times, ugly things, attacks from hell, all this above. He said, but in all our tribulation, that we, why? That we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble. Ah, that's unselfish, isn't it? Mm -hmm. By the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted by God. In other words, God says, I comfort you. This is how it works. You comfort them. Amen. I bless you. You bless them. Amen. I minister to you. You minister to them. Amen. I give to you. You give to them. Amen. That's how we serve God. He comforts us so that we're able to comfort others. Amen. From our experience of being comforted. From our experience of being helped by Almighty God. Yes. There's no such thing as a selfish Christian. If they say they are, then they ain't right. Amen. They ain't right. They ain't doing right. And I don't believe that they're even saved right. 
Amen? Amen. Amen. Therein lies the cure right there. To give and take. God comforts us. We comfort those that need comforting. Amen? Amen. Again, only Christ can do and offer that kind of comfort, but he uses us to do it. Yes. You've heard me say it before. We are his eyes when we see a need. Mm -hmm. We are his ears when we hear a need. We are his heart when we see pain and suffering in others. We are his hands extended. And we're his feet to take it to the need and to comfort the people that need to be comforted. Can I get a witness? My Lord, comfort our mind, he comforts our soul, he comforts our spirit. Amen. In any trouble, in the middle of a pandemic, it don't matter to God. God ain't sitting up there biting his feet up. Oh my God, I got a pandemic going on. What are we going to do now? How are we going to figure this one out? It's worldwide. No problem, man. When I was in Jamaica, they said, no problem, man. We got this. No problem, man. No problem for God. Nothing catches him by action or by surprise. Why? Because he is the remedy. He is the cure. Amen? Amen. When Christ came to save your soul mm -hmm. from hell. And this is what we're going to close with. Someone may say, I'm just waiting for the right time to be saved. You know how many said that to me? And they didn't get another chance? That's why Jesus said, today is the day of salvation. You're not promised tomorrow. Listen to what it says in Psalms chapter uh, 95, verse 7 and 8. Say today, if we hear his voice, harden not your heart. I believe you heard the voice of God today. He might have been using my voice, but it's his word. Amen. It's his spirit. Amen. Stand with me as we close. Amen. You want to find favor with God? We need to repent. Whether we're a Christian and got some unconfessed sins, we need to repent to God. Or whether we're not saved at all, you need to repent. Sorry for your sins like we talked about. Come to Jesus. Let him wash him in his blood. Amen. Forsake him as on your part. He'll forgive him on his part. And we can have a fellowship with the Lord and be saved. And then serve him. And let the Lord bring the remedy. Let's pray this prayer. Whatever you need to do in your heart today. Let's pray it together. Dear Lord Jesus, Dear Lord Jesus I'm, coming right now. I'm coming right now. I need my sins forgiven. I, need my sins I, forgiven. I repent of those sins. I repent of those sins. Cast them away. Cast them away. Forsaken them. Forsaken them. And accepting you. And accepting you. As my Lord and Savior. As my Lord and Savior. As my remedy. As my remedy. For my body. For my body. My mind. My mind. My soul. My soul. My spirit. My spirit. My life. My life. Make me whole. Lord. Make me whole. Lord. And then use me. And then use me. For your glory. For your glory. I ask it all. I ask it all. I believe it. I believe it. I receive it. I receive it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.